today we are going to discuss the women's reservation act <laughs> why am i laughing because the honorable prime minister has termed this bill as nari shakti vandan adhiniyam the people from south india might have some difficulties in uh, pronouncing as well as understanding the meaning of this but as it stands they may be forced to learn the language of hindi because this is not the only bill which have the name of pure sanskritized hindi if you see the amendment or in fact the replaced replacement for the criminal laws so called sanvidas <laughs> right they all are couched in the language of the north anyway official language of the country so you must not be having any problem with that but anyway <clears throat> so we'll be seeing the constitutional issues legal issues with respect to this bill as you might be aware 106th constitutional amendment act provided for in fact provided for reservation for women in lok sabha lok sabha state assemblies state legislative assemblies and in the legislative assembly of nct of delhi nct national capital territory of delhi puducherry has been excluded so what is the percentage of reservation as nearly as may be one third as nearly as may be one third so approximately one third approximately that 33 percentage 33 percentage of directly elected seats for the lok sabha will be reserved for women so out of 543 directly elected seat as nearly as may be one third will be reserved for women similarly as nearly as may be one third will be reserved for women in state legislative assemblies and in the national capital territory legislative assembly hence rajya sabha is out of the purview of the bill in fact the act so is legislative council and of course the puducherry that's what the bill says i mean that the bill does not include that because it amends only the following articles 239 aa it amends 239 aa deals with the national capital territory of delhi 239 aa 239 a deals with puducherry right so as it stands it does not include puducherry that's a minor issue don't worry about that that's not the issue that we are going to discuss why puducherry is excluded there might be reason for them so essentially what this amendment act does is provides 33 percentage as nearly as may be we will be using 33 percentage for the purpose of our discussion in lok sabha for women assemblies and also in ncd delhi 106th amendment act amends article 239 aa to provide reservation for women in nct delhi it adds article 330a 330a adds into the constitution 330a this article says that there will be reservation for women in lok sabha and the reservation for women in lok sabha will also include reservation for st sc and st women as you know that there is reservation for sc st depending upon their population in lok sabha as well as the assemblies 
Article, no, I have not come out, I have not come to the state. I have just mentioned Lok Sabha, 330A. It says that reservation will be provided for women as nearly as may be one third in the Lok Sabha. It also says that there is this reservation, this one third will also include the reservation given to the SC and ST. Simply means <clears throat> the 33 percentage includes SCFT reservation for women. Article 332A also added by the amendment which says that legislative assemblies legislative assemblies will also have one third as nearly as may be reservation as far as women is concerned which includes reservation for SC and ST women too. It also adds another article 334A this 334A says that the reservation for women will come into effect once the act is notified by the federal government and after a census is taken and after a delimitation is done based on the census which means for the actual implementation of this act first criteria is federal government should notify it second is after the notification there should be a census third is after census there should be delimitation when will the census happen when will the government notify the commencement of the act? When will the delimitation commission will be set up? When will the delimitation commission will provide its report? When will the actual implementation take place? Nobody knows. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, for the primary provisions, the most important provisions with respect to this act is this. Okay. As you know that the reservation for women have been provided in the local bodies as per 73rd and 74th amendment act. And there have been demands for providing reservation for women in higher legislative bodies. When we say higher legislative body, we mean uh, the le legislative assemblies and the Houses of Parliament and wherever there exist councils we also include that there have been multiple attempts to provide reservation for women amendment bills have been introduced in the Lok Sabha three times lapsed once in 2008 a bill was introduced in Raj Sabha it was passed in 2010 if I am not wrong right but due to the dissolution of the uh, Lok Sabha, 15th Lok Sabha, 2014, the bill lapsed. So put it in context, this is the fifth time, fifth, fifth time that an attempt to actually introduce a bill for reservation for women in higher legislative bodies is attempted. Hence the attempt, I mean, uh, however, the attempt became successful. So we should thank the parliament, the government of India for making the dream real for the countless individuals who have worked for women's representation. Enhanced political representation has been a dominant theme in Indian political discourse. Multiple civil society organizations, multiple parliamentarians, multiple other stakeholders have demanded that there should be reservation for women. Because if you see, right from independence, the percentage of women in the Lok Sabha in 1952, the first Lok Sabha, was around 5%. Despite seven decades of independence, as of today in the Lok Sabha, it is around 15%. So 15% of 543 is the strength of women in Lok Sabha and if you see take an, if you take an average of 
the political representation of women in state legislative assemblies, it is around 8%. There are states where there is only one MLA. In fact, in Himachal Pradesh, it is said that there is only one. One woman MLA. So whether it is state or at the center, the political representation of women have been marginal, very minimal, very limited. 5% as of today, that's in the 17th Lok Sabha, we are in 17th Lok Sabha, it is around 15%. 15. In Rajya Sabha, it is around uh, between 13 to 14%, around 14% in Rajya Sabha. The current Rajya Sabha, it is around 14%. The average, if you see the world as a whole, the global average is around 25 to 26%. If you take the global average, then the political representation of women in higher legislative bodies on an average it is around 25 to 26%. When you see this statistic, when we compare the global average and the political representation of women in India, there is, in fact, there are miles to go. That is the reason there have been demands for enhancing the political representation of women. Now the question is, is it necessary to provide reservation? Is it necessary to provide reservation for enhancing political representation of women? Is it necessary to provide mandatory reservation provision for that women will be elected, women can contest and get elected and be part of the legislative bodies? Why do you think so? <clears throat> you are saying that for the past seven decades there was no mandatory reservation. Despite that reservation has not improved. Now we need to take it, uh, we need to provide for mandatory reservation for that. We need to forcefully intervene through a law. There should be legal sanction behind the enhanced representation for women. Not only that, if you see the empirical evidence with respect to the reservation for women in the local bodies. Generally, studies have conducted, has, the studies have pointed out that women representation, enhanced women's representation in the local bodies have uh, significant impact on governance and development of those areas. In fact, it is said that women leaders, women uh, members and women presiding officers, women uh, sarpanch and the presidents they have uh, allotted, in fact allocated significant resources for public goods, water, sanitation, health, school, etc, etc. Multiple studies have been done, in fact uh, this uh, Dufflo, D-U-F-L-O, Dufflo, pura naam hai, is the Dufflo, no, not, not necessary, pura naam mat jane jirodh nahi This is the wife, he, she is the wife of Abhijit uh, Banerjee, or I would say Abhijit Banerjee is the husband of Esther Dufflo. <laughs> yes. Husband got what? But the government of India has been not very much enthusiastic about it. It critics said. Because the person might have a different kind of political ideology affiliation. Wait, 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 wait. Let us let us go systematic way. We'll come to that. Now we are seeing the significance of this move. Let us wait. The flow, and there are many other individuals who have studied this, so what we do, we do not write their name fully. Dufflo et al. Et al means, it's a phrase, uh, I mean uh, usage, which will, which means that along with Dufflo, there are multiple other researchers who uh, studied this. They have studied West Bengal, Rajasthan, etc. Especially in the local body, Panjaitra institutions. They found out that women leaders, women members and office bearers have 
meaningful meaningful contribution for uh, <clears throat> development of the local areas in terms of provision of public goods political empowerment of women also have significant impact on social acceptance political empowerment of women also have significant impact on social acceptance attitudinal changes of the society around the world around uh, 140 countries around the world approximately 140 countries provide some kind of uh, reservation for women in higher legislative bodies we have provided a, a, a template a data in that pdf you will find that there are multiple countries we have provided examples where they have provided reservation there are two things some countries provide mandatory reservation through law allocating certain percentage to women in some countries political parties themselves provide significant number of seats to women it has become a convention in some countries political parties by law have to earmark some percentage of seats to women so whatever that might be whatever be the modality of enhancing women's participation in the higher legislative bodies international experience suggest that this is a method this mandatory or providing special provisions in terms of reservation for women is a method to increase women's political participation so by bringing this 106 amendment act india is aligning its affirmative action policies with respect to political representation with the world standard the inter parliamentary union ipu in a 2022 study or report found out that there is significant impact upon upon the policy formulation and their implementation when there are more women in decision making roles in the legislative bodies main sab example isliye bata raha hu because whenever there is a question you will be able to substantiate or an answer otherwise kya hoga answer will be superficial substantiation is required you may not be able to write everything but at least some data some facts has to be written especially when questions are like critically analyzed argue that provides value to your answer that makes the answer more uh deeper deep inter parliamentary union inter parliamentary union is a an association of the parliaments of the world no sir what was the conclusion what they said it said that enhanced political representation of women in legislative bodies have significant impact impact on public policy formulation public policy formulation and efficient implementation and also engendering development discourse engendering development discourse and equitable allocation of resources in fact the manner in which this act is passed in the parliament if you see there is near unanimity among political parties in rajya sabha it was unanimous in lok sabha there was i think two mps have opposed we will see the reason why they are doing it in in the critical uh, in in critiquing the act later there is near unanimity of the members of parliament and cutting across political spectrum 
MPs have supported this bill. What does it show? There is consensus among the political parties that there should be mandatory provision for reservation of women. When political parties agree on a particular agenda, particular item, particular policy, particular law, it shows that the country as a whole has agreement. Ultimately, the political parties, the MPs, represent the will of the people. In a representative democracy, when there is agreement within the parliament, it shows that there is general agreement within the country. To summarize, empirical evidence, our experiment with the local body reservation for women, the general consensus among political parties, and the very poor representation of women and the international practices all point out to the fact that this act has a, is a very significant legislation, constitutional amendment, a landmark legislation, a landmark constitutional amendment that we need to agree. But now we come to the problems with this act. As you know, this act will change the composition of the assembly as well as the Lok Sabha. The procedure under Article 358 should be followed. Which means 50%, at least 50 percentage of states should concur for the actual implementation of the act. Clear? States representation in Lok Sabha is an item under Article 358 which require consent, concurrence, agreement of at least 50% of states. Like it happened in GST. Like it happened in NJAC. Like it did not happen in Corporate Society. That is the reason the Supreme Court struck down that uh, act partly. Ajendra Shah, Corporate Society. So it is mandatory that at least 50% seats, uh, states should be uh, given, uh, should give their assent. That may be one reason that the act, act has not commenced. Commence means operation, in operation, has begun its working. Although president has given assent, now it has to be assented to by at least 50% of states through simple majority. The assembly should pass the act through simple majority. That might be one reason that this act will be commenced. But that's not the issue. The issue is Tying the implementation of the act with respect to delimitation and census. The fundamental issue is, as you see, Article 334A, which I The bill, the reservation will be implemented. When will it be implemented? After commencement of the act. Then there will be one census. Then there will be delimitation. When will the census happen? The 106 Amendment Act is silent on this aspect. When will the census happen? Kab hoga? Kab hoga census? <laughs> Who said? Party in power. Party in power. They should, if they are very much sure of making that statement, then they should have included that in the amendment of the constitution. If you can speak that in the parliament on the uh, floor of the house or outside the parliament, then what is the problem of including that statement, that condition or that timeline target in the, in the amendment? That becomes, then it requires another amendment to amend it. <laughs> Yeah.
one major one uh, we are seeing the criticism of this right the logic of linking reservation for women with census and delimitation is questioned the first point is you have not provided any timeline to it no if at all fine you there might be reason for you to include census and delimitation when will you do it when will you do it nobody knows whether there will be census after the election and after the census there whether there will be delimitation After going through a lot of papers and news, news items, etc, etc, I could not get anything. But my understanding about this issue is, you see, <clears throat> see, uh, pro, uh, the opposition party say that they have provided this because they don't want to implement it. They don't want to implement it, it's an, it's an uh, election rhetoric, it's an election bill. Right, they can go to the uh, voters asking, saying that yes, see, we have brought this bill. Nobody was able to do it under a strong leader, under the strong leadership of the Prime Minister of India. We have, we are able to bring this. Nari Shakti Vandan Adhiniyam. Bolne bhi matlab dikkat ho raha hai. But anyway, but apart from that, one reason is the last census was done in 2011. Now we are in 2023. Population of the country might have increased. So, in order to ascertain the population, it is necessary that we should conduct a census. But keep in mind, women reservation needs women reservation general may not be tied to population. But here the problem is SCFT population is there. Beginning. SCFT, the solution for them is given as per the on the basis of population. So, and women reservation is also provided for SCFT women, which is known as <coughs> this is vertical reservation. There are two concepts: vertical and horizontal. Vertical reservation, reservation provided to SCFT OBC are known as vertical. Reservation provided to women. Disabled. These are known as horizontal because women, uh, women as a category, women as a category cut across different uh, identity. She can be a woman as well as SC or OBC. Disabled can be disabled, can be belong to a particular caste or community. One reason is that the reservation for SCFT women should be based on the population of male and female. That can only, can only be ascertained after the census. By 2028, 29 election, it might be implemented. Thik hai, aate hai tak. Wait. Not only that, if you remember our discussion on the delimitation, we discussed that the allocation of reserved constituencies is done by who? Delimitation Commission. Now, which seats you will allocate? Which seats you will earmark for women? Will you earmark Varanasi seat to women? Will you earmark Vainad seat to women? Will you earmark Gandhinagar to women? Konsa And who? Where? That rotation will come secondary. First, there should be implementation. The seats will be revived after 10 years. That's a different thing. But pehle. It should be implemented. Which seats you will give? If the government decides that we will provide this much, this much, that much, that will create politicization. Nobody will like to give away their seat. So there should be an independent impartial body to decide that. And that is, that is the delimitation commission. 
and because of the SEFT population tying that SEFT population with women reservation as far as OBC, uh, the SEFT is concerned. Because the reservation for SEFT is based on their population. Now we have to know how much male, how much female is there. As far as SEFT is concerned. And this 33% should be divided on that. How will you do it? You should know, you should know the population. The population data which you have is only 2011. 2021 census has not been happened. Now it is not the right time to do the census. It will take at least one year minimum. Now you know why did they not conduct the census. Earlier they said COVID-19. Now it's been 2023. COVID-19. So the SCST reservation is based on percentage of population. Yes. Fixed like having BSC 15 and 7.5. Yes. Yes. Population of SCST. That will remain fixed 15% of people. What is the, what is the percentage of women SC? In uh, country, in the country, what is the percentage, percentage of women is in the country? What is the percentage of women ST in the country? Kitna? If you take the 2011 census, then you might have a data. But we have already passed 10 years. Eh? No, no. Are, no. SCFT population is done by census. Census does not release the OBC. SCFT they, they, they count and they, they release. That's not the problem. That's uh, Oh fine, I agree. But it is 2001, not 1971. For SCFT, readjustment has been undertaken through 87th Amendment Act. No, for everything, for Lok Sabha and state state. You see, as, uh, for, for general, as far as the seats are concerned, 543 is the seat. The seats are allocated on the basis of 9017 population. But later, the population of SCSTs, 2001 census, population of SC and STs have been taken and based on their population, Seats were given to them. So their seats have increased. General ka nahi hua. SCFT jo, jo hai unka population 2001 mein kitna hai. Accordingly seats have increased. Hypothetically speaking in 97 let's say the total number of seats for them in the Lok Sabha is let's say 35. In 2001 population increased. Number of seats have been given to them. Let's say hypothetically speaking let's say kitna. 50 something like that. Hypothetically speaking. Right. But the allocation to states will vary. Lok Sabha seats, let's say one state, state A, has the delimitation commission has allocated four seats as far as SC is concerned. 1971, hypothetically. In 2001, the number of population for SC has increased in that state. So depending upon this population, there, there, there will be increase. If the population decreases, the number of resort feet will decrease. So it's similar to the, we discussed in the last year, the concept, huh? We divided the entire 543 with some uh, population and on the basis of that seats are allocated. Similarly, depending upon the SCFT population, seats will be allocated. One issue to be discussed then is also that if you delete, de uh, if you take the population, current population, the number of third seats for SCFT will increase, also will increase, where? In north. <clears throat> but the fundamental idea of tying the census and delimitation with reservation is that We cannot provide reservation on the basis of 1971 census. We cannot provide reservation on the basis of 2011 census. If it required, then an amendment to the article 82 and 170 is required, which has not been done here. What they have said that 
we need to know the population of the fifth country at this point in time. Why? Because this needs to be connected with the delimitation. After 2026, there will be, there can be readjustment. Population has increased. Population has increased. If ingre with, with increase in population, number of seats have to be increased. If number of seats have to be increased, then there should be delimitation. This delimitation can only be completed as per the current scenario after 2026. It is very much clear that you cannot provide reservation. I mean, uh, according to the government, we cannot provide reservation today because we need to know the population as far as SCST is concerned. How valuable that argument is that, that we are not going to look into it. How logical that argument is that we are not going to look at. But what I can gather is this. After the delimitation of 2026, either the number of seats will increase. Let's take a scenario of increasing number of seats. We have arrived one 848. So what is the percentage of 800, 33% of 848? One third. One third of 848. 272. What are that might be? Now, what is the percentage of one third of 543? Kitna? 182. What is the difference? TK, what are that made? What difference? Almost 100. Almost 100? This is not zero. You are saying approximate wala. <laughs> Approximately. <sighs> you see, there are implementation challenges as far as this is, this act is concerned. It's not very easy to suddenly implement the delivery percentage. Right? Why it is very difficult to justify the inclusion of census because population is not a criteria for women reservation. Generally speaking, let, let us keep the SCST aside. Population is not, uh, population, it is not depending upon the population of women. Let's say women population in India is 40, uh, 50 percent, hypothetically speaking. So are you allocating 50 percent to women? No, it is not the population, right? You, you, have, re, you have reached a number of one third, 33 percent. Like you have in the local bodies, it is not population, which is the basis for reservation of seats to women. So it is not necessary to understand the exact level of population of, of women. Census purpose is to ascertain the population. So linking the act with the census does not have any relation. Right, but it will be very difficult for me to you know, justify this. Because this idea has no, but if you link census with delimitation, then you may be able to justify. Why? Because the reserved seats will be allocated by the delimitation commission. And delimitation can only happen when a census happens. So that is the reason census linked with, with delimitation. Without census, delimitation cannot happen. And as for the free seats concerned, it is 1971. Delimitation, the last, the last delimitation commission was established in 2002, based upon 2001 census, and took almost five years to finalize its report. Right? So, the last delimitation order was in 2008. So the constituent says that delimitation commission will be set up after the census is taken. When the census is taken, then you will have an idea of population. But this population is required only for SC and ST as far as the current scenario is concerned. Because in this act, there is no reservation of OBC. In this act, there is no reservation of OBC. Only SC and ST is covered. 
but the outdated data of 2001 census or to, as per the constitution 2001 census is used for readjustment of seats for SC and STs. If you take 2001 census for knowing the population of women and uh, SCST women and male and reallocate it, the question will be generally this, why are you not using 2011 census? Why are you using 2011? In fact, if you can wait this much, why can't you wait 10 uh, few years more? Because ideally 2021 census should have been taken. We are in 2023 and the government is telling you that we will conduct a census after the election. We have waited this much. Let us get a clear picture of the population of this country and on the basis of that, let us ascertain the population of SCFT female and male and when census is done, a delimitation commission can be set up. So because delimitation is linked with census, and also to have a clear picture, updated picture of SCFT women. The act implementation is linked or tied with census and delimitation. That is the only point or logical explanation that I can give you at this point in time. Right. But the question is, is it necessary to link it? But do you know that recently a delimitation commission was set up? Kahan ke liye? Jain ke. Ab mujhe batao hi kahan hua hai? Also done in Assam recently. Now, how did they do it? As far as Jain ke is concerned, Jain ke bikki me UT. So, the freeze, 1971 freeze, is limited to states, not to UT. <laughs> because this delimitation was challenged with the Supreme Court. Supreme Court said that uh, the, uh, as per Article 2, Article 3 of the Constitution, the, uh, the and JNK Reorganization Act, there is power with the union to set up delimitation and the delimitation is related to UT, not to state. Then the delimitation notification is appropriate, valid, etc, etc. But how did they do it for Assam? As you know, in 2011, four states were excluded from the delimitation. Assam, Manipur, Arunachal and I think Mizoram, sorry, uh, this Nagaland. Why? Law and order problem, etc, etc. Now they set up delimitation commission, precedent issued notification under the 2008 order. So there are ways of doing it. If they can do delimitation in Assam and uh, this uh, JNK through different ways, then it is not necessary that there should be a census. Nobody is stopping the government from taking 2011 census. Uh, fine, there is no need for census delimitation. There are multiple other ways. How do you think that in local bodies reservation is given to women? Har saal mein hota hai. Kaisa hota hai? Which seat should be given to women? In general, in local bodies, there is lottery system. Lottery, lottery is the basis. And, and in Delhi, this in MCD poll, reservation has been based on randomization. Matlab, let's say there are 50 seats. Randomly they picked up. I mean, let's say uh, 1, 3, 7, 9, something like that. Yes, sab jo hai, aisa, randomly allocated. Total number you know, total number of seats is let's say 100, 33%, 33 seats have to be allocated randomly or lottery. So there are multiple ways of doing it. The government has done delimitation and reallocated. In fact, if you see Jammu Kashmir, the number of seats have increased. Some seats have been increased. Although in Assam seats have not increased. But delimitation done, resort seats have been allocated. So it is very much possible. If the political parties can reach to a consensus for such a crucial landmark legislation, then we do not think that the political parties will have such huge differences as far as allocation of seats are concerned. 
Now, if you the again the problem is the timeline is not given. Which fences? Which delimitation? And this fences delimitation has to be linked with the 9071 freeze. What does it say? It says that the census of 20, the census taken after 2026, which is 2031. If the fundamental argument behind the government is we should know the population of women on the latest census because we are planning to increase the number of seats. We are planning to increase the number of seats. And if there are more population of women, then sorry, uh, if, if we increase the number of seats, then there will be more seats of women. But the increase can only be done after 2026. Not only after 2026, ideally, census is taken decennially, matlab, after 10 years. Census will be taken after 2031. Then only there will be deficient if their fees should be increased or not. But given the fact that there is north south divide and the southern states are not willing to what lose their feet and provide more dominance to the northern state, readjustment of constituencies, increasing in the number of seats in the Lok Sabha is also a bone of contention. The linking of women's reservation with the contentious issues of issue of delimitation is highly problematic. If, if you even if you increase the number of seats, definitely because of the population of women generally is high in northern India. No, no. We are not supposed to come to that conclusion, even if you want to. <laughs> Because you are going to be what? Radh Prabharis. Kya hone wala hai? Radh Prabhari. Pata nahi? Radh. Paper nahi padto yaar. Aaj kar usur nahi padha gaya. Kyun? Both Hindu and Express. Anyway, we, we, we know this. We have been reading uh, the other things also. Radh Prabhari. It means chariot in charge. <laughs> Rath Prabhari. You should be happy that I am from South India, still I am able to catch up with the jargons. Rath Prabhari. Rath means chariot, Prabhari means in charge. Go home and find out. Joint Secretary, Deputy Secretary, Director, level officers were tasked, in fact, have been given the responsibility. For coordinating Vigasid Bharat Sankalp Yatra, which means the nine years achievement of the government will be celebrated, showcased, right, through the Yatra, and the civil servants are given the task for organizing, coordinating, and also celebrating, showcasing the achievements of Government of India. Political administration dichotomy became fusion, civil service anonymity and political neutrality seems to become a thing of the past. If this is the work of secretary, director, pro pronounce, absolutely not. The job of a civil servant is to implement it properly and to provide information to the people with respect to the scheme, not to showcase the achievement of the scheme. That's for the government to do, the political party to do. They have been given orders. You are civil servants. You are not masters. Masters are the people and the political executive. And if you don't want to do it, resign. Otherwise, you re register your objection. You can register your objection. Either you will be another Sanjeev but or you may be transferred. No, I am not trying to uh, create negative emotions, pessimistic attitude in you. But this is an issue that we will discuss whenever comes, uh, we will we'll discuss this issue of uh, anonymity, neutrality. This role of civil service. Role of civil service, what are they supposed to do? 
but sir to mix uh, limits of boundaries and territorial constituency will require measure of population for defend that war and updated census to fix the limits or boundaries of territorial constituencies absolutely yes limit boundaries territorial constituency yeah, fine for me having a delayed census is a valid point but no no you are not giving reservation to be men based on population so we we know that there are 543 constituencies in lok sabha directly elected no it is not a rocket science that you allocate one third this, this much 180 or 170 whatever that might be very easy to do it census is not needed because providing reservation for women does not require reallocation of or redrawing the boundaries it's not needed it will only come when in one constituency number of women is this much but the reservation is not based on that as per the act the delimitation commission will decide which constituency sh should be given this much then they it might take population like let's say in one constituency population of women is very less so ideally the constituency should, should have a woman representative jisme kam hai usme hona chahiye zyada hai to fir definitely they will have a voice in the election anyway kaande the point yes the point is that the fundamental idea behind linking census and delimitation suffer from multiple challenges multiple flaws timeline is not given and the link between census delimitation and women reservation are if difficult to establish and if if the given the freeze in increasing the number of seats a census can only be taken i mean uh, uh, the delimitation can only be taken after 2026 so do we it does it mean that we are the act is passed in 2023 and if we want to know the exact population of women should we wait and on the basis of that we allocate more seats to women should we wait till 2031 is it that the government will conduct a census next year based on that a delimitation commission will be set up and reservation for women will be given now the question is why if it necessary to know the exact population of women you might say that delimitation commission will look into these aspects population and other attributes because delimitation commission have been set up and it has been able to do its job and we have almost how many how many months 6 to 7 months is it possible to implement this within 6 months e e e e even if we say that no census needed no delimitation needed it will be very difficult to develop the modalities the, the methods procedures for implementing it is it that reason that the government called a special session because they know that this act will not be implemented it is also said that why they have not done earlier why only this fag end of the tenure of the government why do you think so any reason or the government might say that uh, we have been trying to build consensus among political parties and other stakeholders that is the reason it took, took, took a lot of time for us ha huh. anand my question was this why do you think the why do you think the government waited for 
for long why did no why didn't they implement earlier we are in 2023 the act i mean the election is 2024 the government was in power in 2019 earlier it was there 2004 2014 why did they wait for long one answer can be that was difficult to develop consensus among political parties right and other stakeholders and the government decided that this is the right time to do it and because of the election year it will be difficult for other political party to resist because because they will also be seen as anti women so it is highly possible that the other political parties might not resist or oppose the bill it but it requires at least in, in rajya sabha it requires two third do, do you think that they have the majority in they don't have the two third majority there it requires some other support from others but anyway whatever that might be it's a very very, very difficult uh, linkage between this census preservation and delimitation to to summary that the one fundamental issue is the date when the census will be conducted when the delimitation will be conducted and it is not necessary that a census and delimitation should be conducted for providing reservation to women as women reservation is not strictly speaking not linked with population of women because you already provided a certain number there are multiple other methods like lottery and randomization which has been practiced in the local body which can also be done and given that there is consensus among political parties and across the spectrum and across the society then that uh, the implementation if the if, if the people want if the government wants then it will be able to do it but having said that another important issue that has been highlighted in this act is lack of representation for obc lack of representation to obcs obc women you have provided reservation to sc st you have provided reservation to right sc st but not to obc 40 percentage of population belong to obc it's, it is said that all the we, we don't have exact uh, number one major criticism that is that you have not provided reservation to obc because you have already provided reservation to sc and st what you have done now done, done is you have only somewhat modified increase reduced that the total will all mostly will remain the same or there might be minor increase which means if you re reduce let's say this 182 the total for scft is let's say 50 rest will be ideally speaking will be cornered by general upper caste women because there is no reservation mandated for obc and if you have the statistic the number of obc represented in the parliament and uh, in the uh, assemblies are very less apart from that 17 percentage of obc population is constituted by muslim women muslim women constitute a significant population of obc muslim is a religion islam is a religion but there are communities section within islamic religion who are termed obc a significant more than a quarter of population of muslims belonging to obc this is from 2005 sachar committee report now it has increased 2005 sachar committee sachar rajendra sachar committee set up by the government of india to ascertain examine the socio economic political educational attainment of muslims minorities muslims no, 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 no only muslims socio economic education ah hmm. they have found out that uh, the condition of muslims in india are very worse but anyway uh, significant steps have not been taken to address understand i mean uh, address those issues but i'm saying as of today there are two only two muslim mps 
in lok sabha the party ra, ra, muslim mp women muslim mp women muslim mp only two were in lok sabha because women from islam community islam religion contribute constitute a significant portion of obc providing resident obc would have provided also political representation to who women from islamic community too the condition of women in islamic community as you know that uh, not appreciable they suffer from multiple disabilities challenges and if you see various data anyway wait i i'll give you another point as far as the census delimitation is concerned theek hai there is something called triple test triple triple test kya hai triple test triple test is a test devised by the supreme court to to adjudicate the issue of political representation to obc political representation to obcs in local bodies can be provided as per the constitution you know reservation to obc can be provided as per the constitution but not mandatory many states have provided reservation but the constitution is silent on the procedure on the basis of which you can provide population hai backwardness hai kya hai kuch nahi hai so some states like maharashtra uttar pradesh etc have started providing reservation to obc in local body election these have been challenged by individuals in the supreme court in number of cases supreme court has struck down the reservation because according to them although no procedure is given in the constitution you cannot provide reservation in that manner supreme court has devised a formula or a test triple test triple test means reservation political reservation political the word i am using political not that uh, education employment education employment is entirely different thing criminal lawyer and others we are dealing with political representation political in the local body political representation to lo in local body triple test for this triple test have three pillars one pillar is empirical data of population kitna population hai obc ka us constituency mein us state mein us ward mein kitna hai population of the community the population of the community and their political backwardness also should be ascertained studied by a by an independent committee commission set up by the state state, state government matlab obc ka political rep representation population of obc as well as representation in the political bodies political body mean local body that should be ascertained who will ascertain a commission independent commission will be set up by the government the commission will ascertain and on the basis of that reservation will be provided by the legislature to the obc and the reservation should not be more than 50% kitna hona chahiye your reservation for women your reservation for cst where in the local body and you also have you are also providing reservation to obc you add everything the total reservation should not be more than 50% for so this is a triple test which is applicable to the political representation at the local body for obc let us extrapolate this to the census and delimitation and women reservation according to election commission of india officials this triple test is also to be satisfied as far as women reservation is concerned kyun population of women needs to be ascertained let us leave it logic behind it an independent commission has to be there that independent commission is a delimitation commission if let's say in one state assembly women are overrepresented hypothetically speaking 
then there is no point in giving solution to them there we should have an empirical data and the data can be given uh, ascertained or the data can be gained by a study the study is done by census and on the basis of that research should be given an independent commission should be set up the commission is delimitation commission <coughs> the triple test which is applicable to the local body elections as far as obc is concerned if it seems to be needs to be also applicable needs to be also uh, needs to also apply for women's reservation in higher legislative bodies as far as uh, this is by election commission officials now you are able to links how true this is that we are not going to discuss if the question comes the the constitutional 106th constitutional amendment suffers from a fundamental problem of linking women reservation with census and delimitation argue kaise likhoge argue ka matlab likhna to padega na sahi yes sir because of the triple tax number not only that other thing which we also discussed but the point is that these points will help you to tackle such questions how true it is whether it is justified or not that's one issue that we are going to discuss but according to election commission of india officials they say that this triple test which is applicable will also need also needs to be applicable to the women's reservation otherwise it will be challenged in the court so in order to avoid critical judicial scrutiny against a landmark legislation the required modalities needs to be fulfilled which is census and delimitation etc which will be more acceptable because if the government sets up a committee to reallocate etc then it will be criticized and the manner in which these those two delimitation have been done which delimitation jammu and kashmir and assam have not satisfied most of the constituencies there have been criticism in fact people have gone to the court now if the government sets up another delimitation commission for to reallocate which will further politicize the entire issue because there is there is lack of trust as far as the government is concerned in the in, in uh, opposition ranks they will say that those constituencies were our, our our we have strong hold you have you have earmarked them allotted them to, them to women regiment ka naam yaad nahi aa raha yaar 2021 mein hai 2021 2022 simply say maharashtra obc reservation case uttar pradesh obc reservation case in fact i have taught them uh, taught this body representation of obc in in ed i am not able to recollect it there are two two three judgment we dekhte hain ruk jao sir nahi baad mein nahi abhi dekhte hain it was in my mind because i was when i was coming but i forgot to refer my notes Gawali versus State of Maharashtra. Gawali versus State of Maharashtra. Gawali. अरे Gawali. इसमें क्या है Gawali? G A. Gawali versus State of Maharashtra. Two zero two one. Triple test. So the reason behind tying women's reservation. to census and delimitation is to satisfy the triple test as enunciated by the supreme court in gawali of state of maharashtra theek hai <laughs> but it is true that it will be very difficult in fact um, 
nearly impossible to implement the women's reservation as it stands because it might create a lot of uh, political opposition and if uh, the procedures are not fully aligned with constitutional requirement or legal needs or aligned with the judgment of the Supreme Court, then there are possibilities that this act might be challenged in the Supreme Court. So in order to avoid those pitfalls and limitations and weaknesses, that's this census and delimitation have been introduced in the act. But be that may, can we implement this reservation in a different way for the coming general election and also for the coming state assembly election? There are uh, three to four states which are going for election. How it can be done? Let the political parties voluntarily provide 33% seats to the women. Let the political parties voluntarily give seats around 33% to women for the coming general election. Let BJP give, let Congress give, let, let other parties give. If they voluntarily give, then it will be like providing reservation for women. It will be act, uh, virtually implementing the 33% reservation. But one problem is here. In 2022 UP election, 2022 UP election, 40 percentage of seats were given to women candidates by the Congress party. 40 percentage of seats, around 159 if I am not wrong num number, Congress party fielded women candidate. How many of the women candidate won? Can you guess? Who said that? Congress did not win any seat. Who said? As far as the con women contestants or candidates which the Congress party put up, around 40 percent. That is uh, the number is around 159. How many of how many women candidates have won? One. What is the logical corollary that you can make out from this? What conclusions can you draw? Party may be weak in that state. That might be the reason party has fielded women candidate. This, <laughs> this conclusion might align with the Karnataka election. In Karnataka, the party won and the number of uh, women candidates are very less if you say the percentage wise drastically less compared to UP because in UP they know that they, they, they are not a big player in UP and even if you go if you, if you give seats to women men who women who harnai harnai so let us give them so that the image will be created etc etc if it's so what what, what is the number of votes these women in general polled it's around 1500 to 300 3000 sorry the, the number of votes the women who contested be, on behalf of the Congress party, the number of votes they got was in the bracket of 1500 to 3000. What does it show? And not only that, if you see the profile of the candidates, one candidate was the mother of a rape victim. One candidate was the one who has been arrested and put in jail by the government during CAA protest. So, if you see the profiles of the most of the candidates, you will say that uh, you will see that they they they, they have uh, suffered a lot. They have worked for the people. They were not from the political family. In fact, they represent the everyday troubles, travails of the women. And every constituency has significant proportion of women. Still women did not vote. 
because the atrocities crimes against women are rising in in uh, both states so we would expect that even if they do not win some kind of uh, they, they, they could have got some uh, amount of votes but that did not happen but the problem the, the issue that we are discussing is that even if we ask political parties voluntarily give this much of seats they might give but it is possible that they might choose those seats where there is no winning chance it is a reality that is the reason mandatory portion is given and that is the reason we require delimitation commission to allocate it if political parties are given the right to allocate they will allocate to they might allocate seats to women which they know that there are lesser chance of winning so when delimitation commission allocate the seats it might will be on the basis of sound criteria rather than politics although the way delimitation commission acts these days may not be political but that's a different issue altogether but again yes apart from that let us because of the delay in the implementation because of the lot of processes procedures in between for the before the actual implementation of the reservation let us let the political parties themselves take upon the responsibility of providing or earmarking certain percentage of seats to women in the coming election as well as the general election <clears throat> but it suffers from this issue but again we cannot wait this much 10 years 15 years a hypothetically speaking uh, one uh, air, uh, one law minister previous law minister of an opposition party has said that this act will be implemented only in 2034 not for no, not of this government but one opposition party leader has said that this it is possible that this might be implemented in 2034 why if we see if we connect them 2026 2031 because delimitation it takes years 201 202 2002 delimitation took almost five years to finalize and the order was passed in 2008 for delimitation commission set up in 20 let's say 2031 after census it will take how much time two years three years more than that so we cannot wait that much whatever be the intention there might be good intention behind the linkage of census reservation delimitation but such a long time may, may not be desirable and because of the lack of clarity in the act and the long time of census and delimitation there are criticism that the government is using this act you know for political benefit electoral gains and that is the reason people are questioning the intent of the government behind it they also questioned the intent why did you call a secret session in the sense that the special session has been called fine but should put out the agenda before why the secrecy and why do you want to why do you want to bring such an important bill without any discussion debate why so so the manner of introduction and passing of the bill is also questioned Anyway, the point is that we cannot wait this much longer. There should be more clarity. Now the act has been, the bill has been signed by the president. And the rule making power for the government is also there. Let the government come with clarity. But we can be, if we take the statements given by the ministers that it will happen after the next general election, will implement it, etc, etc. That also can be taken as an assurance that this bill will be implemented i mean the act will be implemented soon article 82 of the constitution Article 81 of the Constitution. If you see that readjustment of seats will happen <clears throat> based on the census taken after 2026. However, 87th Amendment Act 
also provided for readjustment of seats as far as SC and ST is concerned. This is the position. Freeze is there, 543 is remaining. But the number of seats allocated for SC and ST has increased. But the total number of seats remain the same. Right? So the 106 Amendment Act did not do anything with respect to 81, 82 or 170. Whatever freeze is there, freeze is there. If they want to increase the representation of women, provided the total seats increases, then they should have amended 81, 82 and 170. By pre-pawning the, the fence of delimitation, they could have said that, okay, we are amending the constitution, we are uh, bringing it closer. 2026, 2031, no. This census. Instead of 2026, they will say 2023. Amend it. Then after 2023, whatever census is taken, based on that, delimitation can be done. So within a couple of years, this can be done. But that did not be, they have not done that. It's a very, uh, you see, <coughs> what do we say? There are multiple nuances here. It's not very easy. Right, to understand and to know everything about this. But as far as the requirement UPSC is concerned, we should know the significance of the act that we discussed. And we understood the problem with the act. Right. That is the issue that we need to address, understand. And also some kind of way forward. How, how, how should we uh, address these issues. One issue, one uh, way forward can be let the political parties do it. Let the government conduct a census and uh, establish a delimitation commission and provide a to women. Can be done. Right? If, if at all it requires some amendment needs to be done in the act, let there be an amendment in the act so that there will be more clarity. Along with enhanced representation for women, in the legislature and the Lok Sabha. Another issue is this act also do not provide for reservation in Rajya Sabha and councils. So this, this issue, this, this is also an issue with the act. Rajya Sabha may be not here, councils may be not here. Leave the LC, leave the council because not all states have councils. Leave it, fine. But what about the Rajya Sabha? Joint Parliamentary Committee in 1996, sorry, 1998. No. A Joint Parliamentary Committee report in 1996. A Parliamentary Committee report on 2008, which examined those previous bills, have pointed out that. What point out? The reservation for women in Rajya Sabha should also be looked into. They also said that the reservation for OBC women should also be discussed or looked into in appropriate time. So what we are saying that the issue of exclusion of OBC women and lack of application of this act to Rajya Sabha should also be looked into because the percentage of women in Rajya Sabha is around 14%. The challenges for the implementation of women's reservation due to due to the future delimitation also needs to be factored in. Otherwise, the conflict with respect to delimitation between North and South, Union and the State might create roadblocks for the implementation of Women's Reservation Act. If hypothetically, let's say, situation arises that 
2026 के बाद फेंसेस डिलिमिटेशन रियालोकेशन रीएडजस्टमेंट ऑफ सीट्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दैट रिजर्वेशन टू वीमेन नो बी सो बिफोर रिजर्वेशन रीएडजस्टमेंट हैज टू बी डन when you readjust then as it stands if cooperation is taken as the ultimate criteria then the south will lose we have seen that data hence south will oppose which means that delimitation delimitation exercise will take long along with that longness <laughs> this implementation for implementation of reservation act reservation for women will also be delayed right so this issue also needs to be addressed women reservation should not be a casualty casualty due to the center state politics north south divide view future delimitation this is a scenario that might can happen so it is necessary that the government should take steps to implement it as soon as possible by taking all stakeholders into confidence and setting up setting up an independent delimitation commission if need be alternatively lottery system randomization technique which has been which have been practiced at the local bodies can also be used however political representation should not degenerate into the practices which have been prevalent in some areas you know that some sarpanch padi kind of thing proxies ha huh. women should be given representation the identity of the women the profile of the women the women should the it should not that the politi- the uh, representative the women representative belong to the same political family i am the one holding the seat this seat is allocated to women my wife is contesting my daughter is contesting my niece is contesting no fayda as aisa hoga to this needs to be looked into otherwise the power will remain within that Uh, family there will be no real me- meaningful power transfer there will be no m- empowerment oxygen line <laughs> so not only representation but also the women who is representing the candidate who who is the candidate what are the credentials of the candidate should, should also be fa- factored into the women reservation should not result in a situation where the the, the system of power if if, if uh, the, the 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 confrontation of power is perpetuated representation political representation for women is an avenue for distribution of power and those who have already power belonging to upper class and upper caste strata of this country should not use this opportunity for further confederating power rather the power should be given to or what we say hmm. distributed to the weaker and vulnerable sections political representation of women should be an opportunity for the weaker vulnerable section of the indian society to reach uh, to 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 to, rep, uh, to what to participate in the decision making process because they are the group which are suffering because of the limitations and lack of representation the 106 amendment act should not degenerate into situation when the reserved constituencies are represented by upper class and upper caste women apart from sc st it should not happen that obc is cutting across communities and religion are not given tickets and even if they are given tickets they are not uh, given uh, those constituency where where we have where they have winning chances this one should not become mere formality it will it will all this will be cl- become clear when it is actually implemented what are the modalities methods however it's a very uh, significant legislation but the manner of uh, its introduction may raise questions 
and the lack of clarity in the amendment may raise confusion but we may justify the linkage of reservation census and delimitation because of the need for alignment with the triple test and the constitutional requirement and also uh, preclude any future judicial challenges but the government needs to take steps in order to implement it as soon as possible political along with political representation other aspects of women's agency and life should also be addressed economic social cultural and others mere political representation is not enough and there is no causation that if you provide more representation to women there will be uh, more uh, empowerment of women there is no causation like that and another issue rotation anyway chodo leave it half coffee baaki dekhenge baad any questions go home and read it i know that there will be question lot of things you can ask me later because this uh, what we say i mean um, hardly you find some uh, well researched document on this if at all it comes then i'll read and i'll find out if you know some uh, something is there now one issue is this one issue one another one issue i'll tell you is it is it amendment to the constitution any important amendment but this amendment is tied to a future event can it be done this is an issue this is raised by one uh, political commentator although he belongs to a political party an important amendment to the amendment to the constitution will be implemented when some events shall like census delimitation will happen kab hoga kya kuch pata nahi so this, this may not be right the, the person argues that the court should look into this aspect that can we tie down an like, um, amendment to the constitution that through passed by special majority and also by uh, which which requires consent of at least 50% of states can this an important amendment be tied to some a delimitation or census some future events this is an issue in, in fact if you see there is another yeah. the women mps of lok sabha have criticized especially belonging to those i mean those belonging to opposition they even criticized the uh, nomenclature nari shakti vandan nari mean women shakti mean power vandan mean reverence or worship women power worship they say that we do not want to be worshiped don't keep us on a higher pedestal give us equality the way the bill is named is an affront to the dignity of women patronage and patriarchy patriarchy fuse together in my language is <laughs> anyway so they have to decide it and some said that it's a post dated check some said that devils lies in the detail yes government have introduced when will it happen kisi ko pata nahi there are many ifs and buts many permutation combination right so there are opposition with respect to nomenclature i mean it is the the worship why worship you provide them equality reverence worship right anyway that might be a different thing altogether it's not fair but again there are multiple issues with this act but again significant legislation right kab hoga jaldi hoga the devil life in the details padna pada tabhi to pata chala na logon mein kya acha 33% reservation of women right you should read that text then you will understand even after reading the content of the bill you will not understand so so much is and but so much permutation so much contingency so much dependencies ye hoga tab wo hoga Don't post it in 
so. Yes, because if you see the empirical evidence in general as far as the local body empowerment, local body representation is concerned, as far as women is concerned, there is a definable change, although limited. But yes, to change behavior attitude is a very difficult issue. We, we cannot legislate it. There cannot be a law of changing your behavior in the sense that how I be, uh, behave with you. Everything cannot be legislated. So, right? And some once attitude, attitude, attitude is formed, very difficult to change it. But <laughs> fraternity is required. If fraternity is there, then there is no need for uh, the sufficient bill. But again, it's a it's a good thing, but there are challenges which need to be addressed. Keep reading some articles, if at all they come, you know, uh, you might uh, get more clarity. But as far as examination is concerned, this is enough. But if let's say some uh, government brings some rules, changes, etc, etc, right, there might be uh, some new perspectives on this. Mandatory is necessary because if you see the uh, history of representative women, Vo voluntary initiatives have not been uh, what we say, satisfactory. So mandatory intervention is required. So mandatory intervention for engendering political democracy. This is what the 106 Amendment Act does. Try to do. Okay. Thank you.